Welcome to the bold analysis. Kenya, or rather William Ruto, who is the coordinator of African Heads of State, Heads of State on the Climate Conservation Front, is currently today is supposed to officially open the Africa Climate Change Summit at KCC. This summit has had has experienced some twists and spins after some heads of state from Africa, three, Shekedi, Felix Shekedi from DRC, Ramaphosa from South Africa, and uh, the Egyptian president um, withdrew and cancelled their uh, attendance in that. But nevertheless, Kenya was, or rather is expected to host 20 heads of state. I think by midday we will understand how many shall have attended. You're going to follow the, 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 uh, the, the, the summit and we'll give you more update on it. Now, as the norm, what is expected? Kenya is a co-convener. So Kenya with African Union is a co-convener of the summit and is also the host. So there are different leaders that were lined up for receiving the foreign diplomats and the other African heads of states that were supposed to get in the country. One person is missing in the picture and his absence is politically sending shockwaves or rather is sending some message on serious fallout happening around this climate change. Um, and that person is Rigadi Gashagwa. Most of these uh, delegates and the high profile diplomats arrived in the country over the weekend and especially on Sunday because the summit is starting today. Rigadi Gashagwa was actually spending time with his family and dancing with the neighbors in Nyeri while Ruto was actually receiving diplomats in this other side of town. It's also what uh, it is also worthy to note that Musaniam Davadi, who is the chief cabinet secretary, flew to uh, Zimbabwe to attend the inauguration ceremony of Nangagwa, which is supposed to happen, which is supposed to happen today. You don't have listened to African podcast and I have a temptation of saying happen instead of happen. <laughs> instead of happen. So Rengeni was supposed to be at the center of this and receiving diplomat and of course playing an active role. But conspicuously he's missing in the picture. He's been missing in bit of the prep. Now even if you look at um, uh, most of these events, the little, the less, more of which has been seen is him sharing these photos and these videos, uh, the videos of the summit uh, from the State House Facebook page, sharing in his Facebook page. What exactly is happening? Someone was making a joke that as the world is, uh, as the country is gearing up for the world, for the climate change summit, Someone was giving orders for Raila to be blocked in highway, and um, it's it's a it's an explanation of how people sometimes don't have priorities. Why is Geshagwa missing in the picture? Why? Because um, probably as the office of deputy president, uh, his office was not actively involved, probably in planning because. The respective ministries that I saw actively around the summit was that of tourism, foreign relations, environment, and the state house. He's not been part of the presidential uh, team that is receiving delegates. There are three other aspects, and of course I read, uh, I think this had emerged sometime two weeks about some push and pull about the climate change summit tenders. This started, this fallout, sometimes these things are about interest. And such a high profile summit, it's an African summit. 
So it's attracting delegates from all over the world. And with that, there are tenders that are given for service providers. And according to, because it's AU Kenya, for convenience, most of those service providers are across Africa and also in Kenya. The first tender that was to be given was on the first lifting of KCC. And that first lifting of KCC was done by the KDF. So that means it was under, um, it was given through under the Duale side, or rather it was just the president, because the president is also the chief, the chief of defense forces. Commander, not the chief, the commander of defense forces. There have been a lot that is needed even on the hospitality. And I think the bidding was done somewhere in May in quite a number of many other companies in the country uh, were eyeing some lucrative tenders on that climate change. Political lobbying on those tenders, it could it be on even deployment of sound, it would be on hospitality and other security. And there were other uh, tenders, there were also logistics that were needed especially for these heads of state and all the other that. But that seems to be what has happened. That people have missed out on lucrative tenders around the climate change. Why am I saying this? Um, I, want us to, I want to tie this with um, something that Kenya is doing. On intervention that William Ruto has created, on this climate change project is planting of trees. In their budgets, uh, you know, Ministry of Environment and some other government ministries have been trying to set aside some funds, probably, uh, for that project. And one of the offices that is likely being stabbed of that fund is that of Brigadier uh, Shagwa. I tend to believe that um, in the essence that some of this is missing, it could have been the reason why uh, Ragadi has been left out. Number two, the decision by William Ruto to dispatch uh, Musalim Davadi to Zimbabwe to represent him, or rather the move that uh, William Ruto opts to pick Davadi to represent him in some diplomatic missions, uh, events, and set, is slowly unsettling Rigadi Geshagwa. I want you to look at it this way. On, yesterday was Sunday. What would you expect? Gadi will be doing some politics in some church, with, hanging around with the president, and the president is driving himself uh, straight to KCC. That's, that, that's where you would actually expect Rigadi Geshagwa. But after um, Salim Devadi was dispatched to Zimbabwe, everyone else would actually uh, see, and it's by law, not even by law, but it's, it's what is expected, the, the, the common norm that, the norm that is expected is the deputy will represent the president in that event. But Truto has uh, been a little bit cagey on sending the guy out. I don't know why. But of course, sometimes as a president, to manage your deputy, this is something that even Uru did, uh, you not really mostly give him a bit of that exposure. It's, 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 an, it's something that African president, that in, in Kenya we've had, it's a culture that Kenyan presidents have to stifle their deputy. Now, nevertheless, Mdavadi has been representing William Ruto on these events. In Nigeria, Timudu, during the inauguration ceremony of the Nigerian president. It's Mdavadi who represented William Ruto. I think there was also another mission in Burundi and then um, Nangagwa in Zimbabwe. But I'm saying this because in South, Af in South, South African side, I've seen other presidents coming in. Now, there was another information I had received, and I think I analyzed it here, that African presidents, none Af presidents outside Africa was only the Pakistanis president that was expected in the country that had confirmed his attendance, but the other African presidents were not really in it. Mm -hmm. So whether there is a bit of that co-convening and how this is going to be held, it's something to be seen. But the fact that David, uh, Kalo, um, 
Regarding is not part of the team is something that raises eyebrows. Now, who would want? There is something that uh, I know. It's true that presidents would always have are always are tempted to stifle their deputies for political reasons, one or the other. But regarding a Shagwa packaging and contact is also one that is worrying. And it is that conduct, the packaging that will also, you know, make you ish ish. Let's use one example. Um, regarding speeches, lacks the filter, necessary filter. There is a way he has not, he cannot differentiate um, a launch of a school in Kenya and an event that has international dignitaries. And he seems to be under that policy of truthful men, quite a number of damages have been caused by being a truthful man. So what kind of speech would you think Rigeti will give while speaking in Zimbabwe? Of course, even there, in the climate summit, he will not maybe give a speech because it's President William Ruto's side. So there is a very clear uh, line here that uh, Ruto is also fearing of, Rigeti is also being sidelined because of diplomatic flaws that may arise from his visibility. He has a little bit of diplomatic flaws and the political indecency, I think that's the word. There is a bit of speech indecency on his end and managing, and that's the reason why he might have been kicked out of that climate summit. But if I ask you, I can tell you, if you ask me, I can tell you out of these reasons. One of the reasons, the key thing that uh, happens here is about interest. And when my interest is not served, then it seems my presence is not needed. That's my take.